Hi there. I just wanted to give you a bit of a summary of what happened in Ideas Cafe today because a few things that I thought might be useful and I'd love to get your thoughts as well on, on your and your opinions on some of the topics that we were covered. Um, so firstly, I was, we were talking to, to Lucy, who's starting a new business. Uh, her idea is how could, what is it that we can learn from nature uh, and sort of the idea of biomimicry to then influence how we can do business better. And all of these systems are out there that have lasted hundreds of thousands of millions of years. There's something we can learn and we can apply to our businesses. And that's what she would like to do. And she wanted to, you know, her question is, how, do, how does she find her first customers? So, of course, the the first question that people ask is like, um, you know, who's your target audience? And she immediately said small to medium sized businesses. Of course, that's huge. And so the next question is like, who, you know, do you have a, tar a niche or focus? And she was resistant because she said she didn't want to be pigeonholed. And so, you know, when you try and focus down this resistance of, of uh, basically, I think, comes from not wanting to lose business because there might be other people that you want to work with and not being clear about exactly who you who you think you need to work with or you should work with. So the best place to start, we thought, was actually who would you love to work with? What is it about the work that really lights you up and, and gives you energy and, and gives you a, a sort of a spark? And that's when she started being a bit more clear, like she wanted to work with founders or smaller businesses because she wanted to create an actual impact. She wanted to actually find companies that hadn't really understood this and how they, she could make a real difference by teaching them about how, how nature could really benefit how they think about and design their businesses. And she even started talking about estate agents and finances, uh, fi companies in finance. And so it was clear that there was this thing about making real clear change. Whether there's a market there, whether she can sell it, we don't know. But at the same time, at least when she's really clear about it, she wants to work with companies that she can make a difference in and there's a real message about the difference she wants to make, then at least with her social media, her marketing, her even her website copy, it can be a lot more focused and a lot more clear. And it was clear to us now exactly what, what kind of work she wanted to do. And that makes it easier then when you're writing stuff uh, it doesn't stop you from working with other people. You know, having that, we found that as well, as well with our work. It's like very being very, very clear about who we'd like to work with doesn't stop us with working with a range of people at different stages of business. It just makes it very easy for the for our target audience to, to be attracted to the work that we, we, we're we doing for them. So that was an interesting message there or interesting learning for the, uh, from that conversation. We then had Diana who, she does uh, work around so marketing, PR and editorial. And she was on asking about how can she, basically strategies around call calling, getting new clients. Um, what is the message and what is, how often should you call people before stop, you know, stopping <laughs> being, being a pain and, you know, how many times should she get back to them? And, you know, the challenge is you can have the best message. You really know exactly the value you create and the, and you can really have the right words that can convert people. When it comes to cold calling, what we would discuss is like, it's all about timing. You know, is it the service that the person needs at that time? Because if it isn't, then it doesn't matter how good your, your pitch is, they're not going to be interested. So we discussed about flipping it more. So less about going out, to, reaching out to people all the time. So how can you get people reaching out to you? And this is about talking about the value that you create, sharing things that you do that people can maybe do on their own. And so um, I know Nick and Kim do this really, really well. They post a lot about their work and how to do, in Kim's case, how to use your phone uh, to create really great videos. And with Nick, how to really think about innovation to really boost and grow your business. They, they create lots of content that you can learn from and try to apply that, that knowledge yourself. But then when it does come to, actually, I need help with this and I really I mean, maybe getting stuck or you want to go to the next level, then you're going to go to those people because they're the people that you trust, because they're the people that have already shown you what to do so far. And so you believe that they're going to take you even further. And that's, I think, a really good strategy then because then they you reach out to them rather than them trying to always cold call you. It doesn't stop you from cold calling, but at the same time, it manages your energy. You don't feel always that fear of rejection every time you're just doing this list of telephone calls or LinkedIn messages that could be slammed on deaf ears. Um, Dave was another person who's asking, he's a developer, 
who really loves doing the programming work. He loves the work and he was talking about how much time you should spend in the business rather than on the business. And he had this belief that actually the most successful entrepreneurs have a 50-50 split. I think ultimately the question he was trying to answer is how can he avoid the peaks and troughs of being a service-based business? where he would be doing lots and lots of work on a project and then the project finishes and then he has to find a new client. And then how can he smooth out that work? What we discussed in the end, I think, is being really clear about, again, who's who's his customer? Who's his target audience? Where can he deliver the most value and to whom? So that he can then, A, focus the message. So not having to say, oh, I have to spend half my day always marketing. Spending the right time at the right time point when you're energized on the marketing and the business development being very focused about it and also looking for the projects that allow you the space to find the next one so how can you find a project that you can maybe work on for three months that actually pays you for five even six months so then you have that time to then look for the next project and again a bit like uh, Lucy how can you talk about the work you do how can you share your knowledge in a way that builds trust in the audience and then have people have people coming to you asking for your advice and potentially asking for your help on their next project and then finally we had uh mark who runs a video production company been a challenging time because everything has to be online now and they can't go and shoot so they're trying to work out how to waste less time on pitching He's finding doing a lot of pitches and, and, and basically doing a lot of work and then people not converting. So a lot of the time, I think when it comes to that, this kind of creative work and we had an experience of it as an agency, the value can be very subjective. And so it can be very difficult to be on the same page and for customers to understand why what you're doing for them should cost a certain amount of money. So what we all came to a consensus with, and also it worked with Diana, the the um the woman who does the copywriting and the, and the PR is like, how can you package your work to make it easier for people to understand so that they can see, all right, for this amount of money, I get this, for this amount of money, I get that. It doesn't constrain you and, and pigeonhole you only doing packages. It just helps educate your customer as to the value of your work. And so if it goes out of the defined definition of that package, then it becomes bespoke and then it becomes a conversation and then it becomes an easier conversation because they know how it relates to the package and why it should cost more and why it's actually of more value. And then it becomes a less of a, all right, trying to convince people why that price is the word, that price. It's more, you see the package, if you want that, you get that and it costs this much money. If you want something different, then it's a conversation and that's a bit of more uh, uh, interaction to actually find out what you need. And then it becomes more about the value that your service is going to create and less about what are the features and how much do I get, uh, how much do I need to pay for them. So I'd love to hear your questions or your thoughts and reflections around those different topics, whether it's about niching down, whether it's about cold calling or having people come to you, whether it's about how much you spend uh, on the business and in the business. And finally, the idea of packaging up what you do to help people understand um, the value that you create. So if you have any your own opinions or your own experiences or your own challenges, put them in the comments below. Thank you.